Hey, so neighbors, this is Super Zomaga Barbecue, and today we are going to be talking about top 10 event cards ever in W Supercard Seasons 1 to Season 3. And when we're talking about this, we're talking about every event card from PCC cards to Ring Domination cards to RTG cards, Road to Glory, that is, to limited edition cards like The Undertaker, for example, and the initial Ring Domination cards when they first came out. We are speaking about every possible event card. These are the special cards that are released every single week or every two weeks in WWE Supercard. Uh, doesn't include fusions, just clarifying, doesn't include any normal cards. It is purely cards that are specifically obtained through events. And these include also PCC losers and cards that were not selected by the crowd. So, for example, uh, the likes of Undertaker, which is pullable from the board, which is the only event card that's ever been pullable from the board. Uh, so those kind of cards are included. So if you do like this and want to see more top 10 videos around WWE Supercard or any kind of games, champions or whatever, 2K17, hit that like button. If you can hit it as hard as you can with a gore, I am asking you to gore the like button as hard as you freaking can. And if we can get as many as you possibly can go for, then maybe this might become a thing we do more regularly. But let's get right into it right now, the top 10 event cards in WWE Supercard Seasons 1 to Seasons 3. But before we get into the video, remember to leave your comments in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well for more updates and stuff. Let's go. Now, this is a huge nostalgia attack. If you've ever been in WWE Supercard Seasons 1 and 2, you are going to see some cards you may not have seen for a long, long time. So we are going to get into that right now. Now, do bear in mind, this is mostly opinion. But I am going by the thoughts of many who have been in the Supercard community for a long, long time with this top 10 list. And I'm pretty confident that we have pretty much nailed it as to what people think. But if you've got a different top 10, let me know in the comments section below. As long as not all of them are the local talent from the Braun Strowman PCC. Let's get right into it. And just to confirm, we will be including loser PCC cards in any list that we're going to be discussing. And we're going to get straight into that right now by talking about number 10. Now, number 10, I physically couldn't decide between these two cards, so I am going to split this. So technically, this is a joint number 10 between Ring Domination, Sami Zayn from Season 1 of WrestleMania tier, and Road to Glory Sting, the first ever Road to Glory. Now, the reason why I've chosen both of these cards is because Ring Domination Zane was a brand new type of card, and it was only a card. In fact, other than Limited Edition Undertaker, it's one of the only cards for what we would class as regular use. It's only been used very limited times. The design of the card, I personally think, was one of the best designs ever made for WWE Supercard. If you've ever got the Pro, you need to go and check out the design. If you haven't got it, then it is one of the best designs I've ever made for the game, in my opinion. So I couldn't not include that in the top 10, purely because of the design, even though the card was a pain in the ass to get. But do feel free to go and check out the uh, rarest cards in WWE Supercard, because it is actually part of that list, as well as many other cards are. But we're also going to talk about Road to Glory Season 1, Survivor Tier, the beginning of Road to Glory, a two and a half year journey going strong for Sting. Now, this is when Sting was first announced and went into WWE 2K15. And he became a card used on multiple occasions. When the Survivor tier initially came out in Season 1, he was two cards in the tier. Not only his Surfer Sting, uh, or Patriot Sting kind of uh, outlook. I think he had like a like an outfit that was uh, for Patriot Sting as well, and Surfer Sting, as it was called. And then you had the Crow Sting, which is the more up-to-date WCW kind of Sting. And there's another Sting in this list as well that uh, is one of those kind of designs. So you're going to see that later on as well. But the number 10 slot is shared between the first ever Road to Glory Sting and the first ever Ring Domination card, Sami Zayn. In fact, technically you can class those as Road to Glory cards. Um, but uh, since then, they have been classed as Ring Domination cards or shared between the two events. But the first ever Ring Domination card of Sami Zayn is the second joint card that is in that list. Moving on to number 9, the first ever female PCC, an event everyone dreads until PCC seemingly got removed from Dode Supercard Season 3, PCC Page. Now this card was awesome. One of the best looking cards I've ever seen. 
And in fairness, I don't think they'll probably ever top it when it comes to PCC females. Because this card literally had the right look, it had the right design, the background was spot on for the card. And it is one of the most favourite card images used by WWE Supercard players are from, I don't know, what we call veterans nowadays. Not only that, but it was an absolute bitch to be able to get this card. And people nowadays look at point totals for PCCs. And we're talking like 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 for the ones in Season 2. In Season 1, this card needed a minimum of 28,000 points to be able to get themselves a PCC page card, uh, which was probable. And this card was beautiful. I, thankfully, was one of the people who did it. I actually had a group of guys uh, that I uh, align myself with and I still talk to nowadays. I uh, were all in the same chats, all going for the same card. It was amazing. But the card image on its own just suited it down to the ground. And as an event, it was epic. But less said about that, we'll move on to the next card and our first and only loser PCC card in this and I had to include this in the list because I personally think this is a bit of brilliant and honestly I think this is one of the catalysts uh, as well as you got the WWE fans as well to not only Braun Strowman's growth as a very very popular heel but also James Ellsworth being a very very popular card and this was effectively the James Ellsworth card but also known as the local talent card from WWE Supercard Season 2 in SummerSlam tier. The first PCC card, which wasn't particularly very popular to begin with, but actually sparked a movement uh, called the Local Talent Movement. This card didn't have the best stats at all. In fact, its stats were almost as bad as a common card. In fact, it was going to be actually useless. And the card itself was practically just an image, because that's all it was going to be. But the Local Talent card was incredibly well fought by Cat Daddy W Supercard as being like a nice little jokey image and it almost actually ended up coming up with the win against Braun Strowman. Given when Braun Strowman first started his new gimmick and this was towards the beginning of his time on Raw, the whole angle between him and James Ellsworth was just kind of blown off as being just another big guy that's going to get pushed. But this did start the local talent movement which uh, ended up being lots of support for James Ellsworth and they're both gone their own separate ways now onto different brands and this card has effectively been written into folklore. I'd be interested to see if they actually create a support card for this at some point so uh, maybe fingers crossed in that part but we move on to number seven and this is another season two card this is Finn and Balor which is the SummerSlam series two ring domination card. Now this SummerSlam ring domination card by Finn and Balor was one that uh, people were anticipating with him going on then to win the Universal Championship before unfortunately and very very cruelly losing it in a fashion of injury where he had the tar for less than 24 hours before having to give it up. Finn Balor, the first ever Universal Champion on WWE Raw uh, was the event card for that week, the first event card for Summer Sam tier and I hope you'll agree, especially the pro card if you ever get to see it is one of the most magnificent cards to look at. The overall uh, design of it, the overall stats were awesome, the reception by the community was very very good and just as an overall design I thought the SummerSlam cards were way better, miles better than the Survivor cards and the WrestleMania cards and I think from there it's kind of gone upwards uh, since then in terms of design for all the cards that are involved. So Finn Balor comes in and it was nice to see him one with his jacket, so like the non-demon version. There's plenty of versions in game of him having the demon uh, king outfits on, but it's nice to see him without that. He was having his normal jacket, although that's kind of all we've got since then. But hey, you know, we can never get enough Finn, because it's always Finn. Moving on to number six, we go back to season one. We gotta turn back the time and go to Road to Glory. Just after Seth Rollins started his first WWE Championship reign, one of the best images showing him with the belt was showcased in WWE Supercard as one of the Road to Glory cards. And this card image was absolutely awesome. It's one of the most popular used by for any Seth Rollins, given he is now one of the most popular superstars in WWE. It's one of the most popular images used on his cards to date. And it was just an amazing image at the time. And the second only that used the WWE Championship, the other one being Brock Lesnar 
in the legendary tier for PCC Season 1. But let me know what you think so far. We're halfway through the list. Have you got any personal favourites that you would put into this list in the top 10? Let me know in the comments section below. But we're going to move on and go way forward in time. In fact, only less than six weeks ago, at this point, the Alexa Bliss Season 3 Female Ring Domination card. Absolutely beautiful image of Alexa Bliss. Well-deserved title win. Now she obviously has lost it to Naomi, but maybe she might win it back at WrestleMania, who knows. But at this point in time, Alexa Bliss is no longer the Women's Champion, but what an image, what a card overall. Kicks every other card's ass as it stands to Season 3, but who knows what will happen in regards to the cards in the future, and maybe other future event cards might beat her. But as far as I'm concerned, one of the best images in-game for stop and one of the only cards that really complements the event card itself and just looks like it fits. Again, the Pro looks amazing. One of the best cards I've personally ever seen. And we're going to talk about the best cards I've ever seen. This one comes right up there. My fourth place out of ten, top ten event cards, Sting. PCC, the Crow version from PCC Season 1 Survivor Tier. In fact, I think this was the first Survivor Tier PCC, if I'm not wrong, against Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Now, the Hollywood Hulk Hogan card was good enough. I mean, who else wouldn't want an NWO version of Hollywood Hulk Hogan? But when you're facing up against the Stinger, the Icon, the Vigilante, whatever you want to call him, WWE, WCW, whatever you want to call him, probably not TNA, let's be honest. But... The Stinger, number four, amazing card, and I'm a massive fan of the old style PCC card with the design it had. I'm a huge, 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 huge fan of that, and the Sting PCC goes in number four purely because of the fact you know that you know below that image he's got a baseball bat and he just looks badass. He looks like he's going to kick your ass. So the Stinger is my number four. And we're now going to crack into the top three. But before we crack into the top three, I want to talk about about four or five cards which haven't made it to the top ten because they just slightly missed out. But I wanted to name some honourable mentions. And the first one goes to Roman Reigns in the Road to Glory and Survivor tier. The second ever Road to Glory, Roman Reigns with, uh, it was the fast lane, I think, against Daniel Bryan. He had the design when he was getting his push after he won the Royal Rumble. And the card image just looked absolutely phenomenal. Next is Road to Glory Brett from the WrestleMania tier in season one again one of the best looking cards ever and a very big fan favorite for the cards that he now has in the game another one which is a big favorite although daniel bryan doesn't really have too many pictures now because his uh, cards uh, since his retirement have completely disappeared from the game uh road to glory daniel bryan from wrestlemania season one with the intercontinental championship another one very 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 high up my list Miz Dow as well, although he has left the company and has gone on to do not much in TNA. Uh, Miz Dow, uh, who is Damian Sandow, was a very, very, very good card. And in fact, one of the only really, really decent cards in WrestleMania tier for Season 1. But that image on its own was just awesome. And the final mention I wanted to give out was the Kevin Owens Universal Championship Victory Card, which is an event card. Summer Slam tier, and this card looks amazing purely because yes, Universal Championship, but also because overall, the card design just in general looks incredible. And one of the most favorite images of Kevin Owens I've ever seen, other than the ones where he looks like he's genuinely pissed off and he's going to kick every single one of yours asses, including Sami Zayn, because they always fight. But now to the top three for the top ten event cards in WWE Supercard Season One, Two, Three. We're going to be talking about first of all Goldberg. Goldberg, possibly the rarest event card to be able to be, be got. In terms of the pro, not no way at all. He was not rare in any way, shape, or form. But in terms of the single card, one of the rarest cards to be able to get. And probably would have gone in my top 10 cards list if it wasn't for the fact that we had the super tokens. But Goldberg was incredibly sought after. But did get himself a much worse money in the bank image afterwards. Which in my opinion was one of the weakest images I've seen in the game. It just looked too cartoony to be Goldberg, but that's just my opinion only. This card, however, was intimidating. It was new Goldberg. It looks really awesome. And, you know, overall, it just matched the card. I mean, literally, if you could put the two cards together, other than Alexa Bliss's card in Season 3, this card probably fits the card so well. 
and I just loved it. From the day moment I saw it, I looked at it, I thought this looks incredible. I had the same feeling about Shane McMahon's car, but because his card is not really doing anything on it, it just kind of looked a bit, you know, a bit meh. Whilst Goldberg, he's got the your necks looking straight at you, eyes just glowing in the back of your head. He just looks, he looks mean, he looks like he means business, and he looks like he's going to kick everyone's ass, and he looks like he wants to mutilate Brock Lesnar again. Even though this card's very, very recent, I thought that this, especially given how rare it was for people to have access to it, I personally thought this deserved to be in the top three. We're going to move on now, and the next two, numbers two and number one in this list, are both from PCCs. And I'll tell you this now, one of my favorite ever images from WWE Supercard. I just love this image. The background as well is just incredible and I wished the WWE Supercard would do a card like this again and that is Dean Ambrose. PCC Season 1 is number 2 on this list and this is from the Legendary tier. This is, I think this is the last PCC before they went into Survivor tier. This card was insane. The image here matched with Seth Rollins, which I wasn't a big fan of Seth Rollins' uh, image on the card. Dean Ambrose card just looked amazing. The, the image is something that people have kept using since, and he has a very similar image on the Super Tokens as well, but this, you just cannot get away from how amazing this card is, and how the design looked, and at the time, how good it was. For most people who played Season 1, they will agree, this is one of the best cards that was available, and one of the best images available in the game. But let me know if you had another one. Now, one other notable mention, and I had to mention this card because it just literally, this would have been my number 10 if it wasn't for the fact that I've got Road to Glory Sting and Ring Domination Zane. I would have picked the United States Championship John Cena. That card, one of the best images I have legitimately ever seen. But I've just got to be honest and say that, it, it, you know, when I'm thinking about all the best images I look at, this is great, but it's not the best. It's not top, 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 but it would be just outside my top 10. So that's my last honorable mention before we go on to the number one image. Because I knew a lot of people would say in the comment section about that card, but this number one image, I don't think anyone's going to deny. Maybe some will say Ambrose is best, maybe some will say Goldberg's best, but I think this card is the best overall image ever in WWE Supercard because of the background, because of the image of the superstar in question and that is the fast lane of daniel bryan pcc season one card this image on the card the overall design of the card is possibly one of my favorites in the game full stop and i know for many this is the best event card and some they've even kept it as their background for the superstar the overall image of daniel bryan just fits his persona when he was the b plus player image and also kind of represents one of the most uh, underappreciated WWE superstars ever before unfortunately he did get his career ending injury. But a general manager or now general manager SmackDown, Daniel Bryan is in my opinion the best ever designed event card in WWE Supercard and as far as I'm concerned, especially given the amount of points people had to get for this disc, this event required 52, 53,000 points I believe to be able to get the card itself as a pro version and that is the card that in my opinion is the best event card and the top of the top 10 event cards in WWE Supercard so far. From seasons 1 to 3 let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below and don't forget to list your top 10 or your top 3's let's just say top 3's in the comment section below. And of course don't forget to like this video and hit the little subscribe widget as you can pop up just over here in a moment hit up the description below for details to my twitter twitch instagram and facebook if you can go and follow like those etc that'd be amazing i'll see you all very very soon on one last thing and that is to zoof